Hey, we wanna let you know that the final Rhett and Link musical show dates of the year and for the, the foreseeable, foreseeable future, future are right, are coming up on us. So November 20th through November 23rd, we're gonna be in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Phoenix, Arizona, Sacramento, California, and Valley Center, California. Go to rhettandlinklive.com to grab those tickets. We promise we will make it a very, very special night worth your time. Rentlinklive.com, go get them ticks. Now on with the biscuit. Welcome to Ear Biscuits. I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. This week at the Round Table of Dim Lighting, we are exploring the challenges of maintaining a friendship. Uh, we're not gonna necessarily talk about, I mean, I'm sure we will. We're not talking about the challenges in our friendship. Maybe it'll, maybe some of them will come out as we talk about the challenges in your friendships that you have uh, led us into. Thank you for those of you who have responded to our prompts on the social medias that we have asked and uh, told us about some of your situations that you've got with your friends yeah, that if we're we, going to address. If we've got anything, it's Good a hair? It's a friendship, no, it's a friendship. No, friendship, yeah. It's, it's a friendship and you know, with over 35 years of that continuing to happen, like constant. Friendship is still happening. It, you know, it's. Um, Despite the doubts and the comments from time to time. Right. <laughs> I, and I would say, you know, it, 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 to be friends as long as we have and to not get like concerned comments from fans who are only seeing us through the lens of the lens. Lens of the lens. Would be, that would be weird. I mean, for for us not to be comfortable enough with each other that sometimes these honest moments of tension come through in the things we create, I think that's a beautiful thing because it's, again, it's those, every everything in friendship is not rosy. Friendship in general is very difficult. And as I've looked through um, these questions that, that that we're gonna discuss from Mythical Beasts, it was, it's a good reminder of, to me, ab about how much work it takes. You know, I don't wanna show our hand here, but it, it, does, it does take a lot of work and, it's, and there's no clear answers because on any given day, in any given friendship, there could be any scenario that you've never experienced before and you may not know anyone who's been through it, so you kinda, it's like, what do I do? Um, so we'll talk about some of that. Yeah, and like, like all relationships, they have their projects that have to receive attention. And so uh, hopefully we can offer some insights. But you know, speaking of our and, friendship. And, and viewing friendship as a friend as a project, it's maybe a bad place to start. <laughs> um, well, you know what I mean. It's an on, <laughs> just, it yeah, requires ongoing attention. But a yeah. person is not a project, that's not what I meant. But speaking of friendship and maintaining friendships, uh, I mean, we did something that is just about as friendly as you could possibly do. We went and went on paddle boats <laughs> this past weekend. Yeah, me and Rhett, <laughs> me and Rhett went out on a paddle boat together. Can you picture this, the two of us on, uh, <laughs> at Echo Park, there's a lake, which I guess is called Echo Lake, I, is it? I just call it Echo Park Lake. I don't know if that's Echo what it Pura. is. But Echo Park Lake. It's like the most one of the most LA things that you can do is get on these, Echo Lake. Echo Park Lake. Oh, Echo Park Lake. Echo Park is Lake. get on one of these giant swans that is a paddle boat that can hold like five people and paddle around this pond. And I and I've been by this place so many times and I've been Me like, too. gotta get out on one of those paddle boats. You'll see it in like if a if a commercial decides to shoot in Los Angeles, especially if they need like a picturesque scene, like if it's a, if it's an ad for a medication, hmm. they'll shoot at Echo Park. Now they'll 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 film at such an angle where like you can shoot from from one side of the lake, shoot across these fountains. There's three fountains that are grouped together that shoot water probably 50 feet in the air, straight up in the air. And then you shoot past that and you can see the skyline of downtown Los Angeles. It's very beautiful. But you just gotta make sure that you that you, sh you film the proper angle around the homeless encampments. There are a few of those. Right, yeah. But they're very well. They probably get them to leave when they're about to shoot a commercial. They're very well maintained 
homeless camps because I mean they're like there's a camp under this tree and then you go to the next tree and there's a camp but I mean they got nice tents and there's this one guy he had a freaking where we parked he had a flat screen television beside his tent and I was like how on earth and then before I could get my answer I was like oh solar panels yeah a solar powered dude had solar panels flat screen TV out there and a nice tent and uh, so it was like this is prime real estate. I made an I made a note. Right. If if I need to live up, live out of a tent, you, LA well, is a great place. First to, of all, you got to get a flat screen and move to a LA. solar panel. I'm already here. Uh, and there's just so much going on. I mean, the thing about any outdoor space in Los Angeles on the weekend, really any time, but especially the weekend, is there's just so much happening. There's so many people there, and I know for a lot of people that can be a problem because you're like, why can't I just go to an open space? Now you can easily get to open spaces where you won't see a soul, you just have to go outside of town. But it was just like so many people of all walks of life, almost as if it, the, the, the the people had been manufactured for a, for the sake of a movie. Or for like an insurance commercial. Walking I mean, around. Uh, medication commercial. And then you got people selling things, you got this guy giving uh, free vegan ice cream samples next to a guy selling uh, ceviche. ceviche, and then you got the taco place, and it's just, I don't even know if these people have licenses or permits, I don't even care, and then. So picture me and Rhett holding hands <laughs> and skipping around this lake together, yeah. hopping on, uh, That's exactly hopping how on it a, happened. a swan, and just pedaling out there with our with our jean cutoff shorts. Yeah, if you want our thighs, I'm sorry to disappoint tanned. you, but we actually didn't get on the same swan. Uh, my sister in law and two nieces were in town, uh, and then I your I think your wife had the idea to be like, hey, let's let's all go to the swans. Let's all get on the paddle boats. Let's do this thing that we've talked about doing for ten years and we've never done. So it was. You and your wife and two of your kids. No. Well, one of your kids. No. Me and Christy were on a pedal boat and they call them pedal, no, I'm just saying, not paddle boats. I'm boat, just saying who way. was there at the, this event. The, uh, and then my wife well, we can do and it my boat. son. So me and Christy were on a boat. Got And just you and Christy. Just me and Christy. I don't know how you worked that out. Because you volunteered to well, take they, the youngest the kids. Kid, so Shepard and his first cousin Adeline, my brother's uh, daughter is like, they're, they're, they are each other's favorite people. They're the, they, they're the same age. Same age within like a couple months and they just love each other, they love spending time with each other, they're into all the same things and they just, you know, two peas in a pod as you say in the South. And they really love to include Lando which is very cool, He's you know, he and Shepard are really tight but Lando's a little bit younger so right. it's, I think it's nice when Adeline enters the equation that they still wanna include him and invite him over to swim and stuff like that and um, by the way, you do know that Shepard jumps off of the roof of the um, the shed that covers the back the half of your patio into the pool. Yeah, they recently discovered they could do that. Well they invited Lando over and then Lando comes, we're drive, we pick him up and he's coming back home and you know how Lando is, he like had this sheepish look on his face and I, I remembered, I was like, did you, Lando, did you jump off of the, the roof into the pool? He was like, yeah, Shepard, Shepard told me I should do it. Oh, Lando did it. And he did it. That's awesome. And then he started crying. He was like, don't be mad at me. <laughs> I was like, I'm, we're not mad at you. Boy, I, Shepard has never cried about anything except not getting his way. He's definitely <laughs> ne never cried about getting caught for something. So the, three of the, so the three of them wanted to be in the same boat and then you stepped up to the plate. Well, I knew a, an adult had, I, I like being the fun uncle, you know. The funkle. And uh, I'm quite a funkle. And I was like, I'm gonna go out with these kids, they'll be fun, we can drive through. I, I knew we one, they would want me to drive really close. Drive, I think, <laughs> paddle. You drive a boat? You do drive a boat. Cause there is a rudder. Uh, they wanted me to go really close to the giant fountains because the wind is like blowing the water that's going 50 feet in the air and of course you can go right under it and get wet and it's like going on the log ride at Disney. Chrissy and I watched you do that from a safe distance. Yeah. Uh, we spent most of our time trying to get an Instagrammable photo. You know how that is? Did you get one? Uh, yeah, she, she, you know what, she did gram one. Hmm. So I think she got what she needed. I always forget that that's a thing that you can do. I think it's just a sign of my age that 
social media is, is still just not a part of my DNA. Well, so I think I'm you doing were, things you were that focused are, on the right thing, man. That was good. I know, but I mean, this is what we do, man. It's like you, if you're well, in we're a talking giant, about it. if you're in a giant swan, you should get a picture of yourself in a giant swan. There's a freaking coffee shop out there. I got a lavender. You make it sound like it's in the middle of the lake. It's I got on the dock. I, I got, you have to walk through a little coffee shop that serves breakfast burritos on the weekends. What? I love it. I got a lavender latte, and I'm not ashamed of that. I love when lavender is in things. It's one of my favorite flavors to be in things. Something that seems like it shouldn't be ingested. Yeah, let's eat perfume. That that sounds like a good uh, weekend. This lavender latte made me so happy. It's t just almost as happy as being in a swan on a lake. Chasing swans, did you notice that? You could chase other swans with this giant swan. Do you think that the little swans believe that the giant swans are swans? No. Do you think they know they're inanimate? You think they have a concept of inanimacy? Is that a word? I think they know they're not of their kind. I don't think they I don't think they look at that thing and register that it is trying to impersonate them in any way. Did you know that you, the, these swans on the weekends, you can go out there until 10 o'clock and you saw the light, the light? Yeah, they got some LED the piping, piping, piping on it. You can, you can, think about that. You can go out there at night. We could be like the tourism board for Echo Park if we don't watch out. And then we paddled to the far end. And by the way, oh, the, yeah, this was the, other, the other boat was Jesse and your sister-in-law, Teresa, and then. Uh, My other niece. Lily, and then your older niece who's closer in age to Lily. Yeah. Emery, mm -hmm. which they were hanging out. So that, it was really cool. It was, you know, Christy Very had a good sweet. idea. Um, Christy had a lot of good ideas. We'll get to the second one. And then she, so we paddled all the way across. We're like trying to keep up with you and the kids, which they got mad because you wouldn't let them pedal. No, no, no. What's the story no, 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 there? No, 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 no. They kept switching off. So I would be on one side, I was on the left side. Okay. And so only two people can pedal yeah. at a time. So I was just like, I'm gonna pedal because I don't wanna be in the back and have to deal with two little kids up front trying to direct where we're going. It's hard to be Funkle and if, so if you're not in the I driver's seat. I just let them rotate in the other seat, but then eventually they were mad they wanted me to be in the back and they wanted to be driving it. And so yeah. I, I eventually, I was gonna let them do that. But what's the first thing that you noticed when you got out there? It's really hard to paddle <laughs> yeah. and you don't go anywhere. I was like, this is, this is my workout for the day. Oh man, I felt the burn. Yeah, like really, I felt the burn and then I felt the burn when I went to the gym. Woo. I was, uh, my trainer was like, okay, we're gonna do squats and I'm doing squats. My back is, my back is back, man, and now I'm doing oh, squats. don't say it. I mean, we'll see how long it lasts. Um, not, not, a lot of, not a lot of weight though, but I was like, man, <laughs> I was like having trouble. I was like, well, I did paddle boats this, this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it's like, I that's was the sad. only person to say that in the gym that morning. I, I, I paddle boated too hard this weekend. Well, you went all the way to the squats. other side and there's a group of people on the bank. Yeah. And you got there before we did and you just sat there and you're looking at them then I pull up and it's a freaking. Freestyle rap session, battle. A rap battle. It's a rap battle. On the far end of Echo Park. I love this town. Like where can you go, get a lavender latte, get on a giant swan, swan and then paddle your way to, to a, a rap battle. battle. I mean, nowhere. People always ask me, every time I go, I go back home to North Carolina, they're like, do you like it out there? With so much skepticism dripping in their voice. We, we love it. Hell yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And then, you know what? You got the lavender latte, I went out to use the bathroom, and there was a homeless man with his ass in the sink. <laughs> Did you see that guy? I he, love it here. I love it here. <laughs> he was washing his ass? That's a good enough place to start. <laughs> I didn't see that, you didn't even tell me. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want you to go gawk at him. <laughs> I wanted a man to have his privacy. The sun was setting, it was golden hour. Uh, man. I mean, for a man who takes a shower and stares his neighbors down, I, I respected this guy. Yeah, any choice. Like, in his dominance. Yeah. Um, and then your wife had a great idea. We were trying to figure out what we were gonna eat and she said, well, we can go get some deep dish pizza and I was like, ding, ding, say ding, no ding. more. We were on the lake and then you started pedaling for the shore before 
<laughs> she even told you where it was. I haven't had deep dish pizza in so long and there's this place, is that in Highland Park where that place uh, was? It's Echo, Echo Park. Massa? Echo Park. Yeah. Echo Park. I don't know why it's called Massa. That makes it sound like it might be an Indian restaurant, but it is, um, it is straight up Chicago style deep dish. Takes an hour for them to bake a pie. It's very reminiscent of Lumanati's in Chicago because we got the mm -hmm. original they call it, which is sausage and mushroom, and it's got that cornbread crust stuff that's like the crispy, very corn mealy crust, and the sausage is a, sh a giant piece of sausage that's the same size as the pizza, which I've only ever seen that at Lumanati's, which yeah. I'm sure it's done other places. But like, yeah, we, we, we got pizza, and, and Christy was like, you can only eat about one piece of this stuff. Oh yeah, it's so huge. So, and I, I could, when we finally got there, and I, I got to the crust of the first piece, and I'm like, I start to think, man, I, I, it tastes so good, I want another piece, but I don't think I can do it. And I looked over, mm -hmm. and you had, you were at the crust as well. Mm -hmm. And I thought for a second we were on pace, mm -hmm. until you said. That's my third piece. <laughs> this is your third piece. It's crazy. You were going exceptionally slow it's, though. It's so dense. It's so good. I had three pieces and then you you I ate could. you ate and you ate like the dense it's like eating a dense loaf of bread, like eating the whole loaf. Yeah, and then I as I told you, then I'll say again, I could have had a fourth piece. The only reason I didn't is because y'all made me feel bad about having three. But the you know, to transition back, these are the things that friendships are made of. Friendships are made of good times. Rap battles, and, deep dish pizza. And bad times. And LED light piping. You know, you, you can't really, really quantify a friendship until you go through some bad times together. And I even say plural. Um, it's basically going through life together. So as we go through these questions, I, th I think we'll get very specific about some problems that pop up and even how to maintain or reconnect in a friendship, things that, things that we've been through. We are, no, we are no experts. But we'll do our best. But first, uh, we wanna let you know that mythical.com continues to be the place to go for all your mythical needs and we've got this. Let's call it the hub of happiness. The Yeah, we've got what we're calling the transcendental tea. We're doing, we're just experimenting. We, we're introducing new stuff all the time over there. Let me see the there. back of that one. The back of it is a big version of the front. That is nice, it says mythical in a lot of ways. It's a little spooky, it might be, it might be a, kind of Illuminati. Ooh, I gotta tell you. Ooh, I gotta tell you. Did you, you. say Lou Malnati? Speaking about a Deep Illuminati. Deep dish pizza? I was literally at something recently that I have to tell you about and somebody brought up, unironically, Bohemian Grove. Bo <laughs> Bohemian Grove. Oh yeah? Yeah. Oh yeah. You gonna tell me about it? I'm not gonna tell you about it now. That's Why? a secret, man, because I wanna get invited, man. Oh. Um. You think you're gonna get invited? I really hope so. Go to mythical.com, the hub of happiness, because clothes make you happy. New, <laughs> new, getting a new something that you can wear. That's the message It's a little slice of happiness. You wanna be happy? Go to the hub of happiness, mythical.com. <sighs> and we're back on the flip side of our ads. You wanna get started with a question? Do it. This is from Kaspooky, which is Casanora on Twitter, who she's changed her name to Kaspooky. It's a little dated after Halloween, so yeah, hopefully well, she's changed she, it. She answered this question before Halloween, so she it was called Kaspooky at the time. Yeah. Um, I have a friend that chronically cancels last minute. We'll plan dinner or a hangout. I'll be halfway through cooking the meal or heading to her place when she texts me to say that she can't meet anymore. Less than one hour notice. She always seems so excited up until she cancels. Sad emoji. Yeah, this is this is extremely frustrating. Um, Christy, <clears throat> Christy had a friend who was like this. A chronic canceler. A chronic canceler um, back in the day and so I would hear about it. She would complain to me and I, we wanted to make sure that th there wasn't some unspoken thing going on. It's like, do you just feel obligated to make plans 
but you don't, you're not really motivated to follow through, so you're looking for an excuse. And, and the conclusion in this particular example was no, that wasn't the case. She's just, there's, there's some people who just, they can't, they can't keep plans together. Yeah. But I, w I would say it, 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 it has to be on the table to consider is this, is this an avoidance thing? But let's assume it's not because, because like she said, she's very excited, always so excited up until she cancels. And she's probably apologetic or he's probably apologetic or whatever, so. It feels like it has to be addressed, right? So I think honest communication about the elephant in the room, which is you're always canceling on me, needs to be specifically addressed and I think that you could no longer wonder is it about is this a is this right. an avoidance thing is this because you could just say hey there seems to be a pattern where we've got plans and then you cancel them at the last minute and i just want to know and i want you to be honest with me is this something that's just related to this the way that you schedule your stuff and it's just unfortunate circumstance or is it that you just don't want to hang out because i just i feel like i need to know as your friend yeah, that's a tough. That's a very tough thing to say. But I do feel like you got it. If you want to actually make progress in this area, like you want to pursue this friendship, you got to take that head on, right? I, I think a through line of everything we're going to talk about it is, talk about is going to be how key communication is. I mean, when you're when you're left guessing, you never know if you're right. Um, but I, I think that I I'll end up sharing a story where. I did choose to communicate something and it went sideways. So communication alone is not the key. It, it has to be proper. You know, I think, and I, I don't know all the criteria, but I think it's this, if you, if you try to have as much humility as possible, so it's not a confrontation, but like kind of like the way you said it, that was like a humble approach. It's like, hey, this is, I just wanna share how this makes me feel. I actually don't know what to conclude. I really would like to hear from you about this because be very careful when jumping to conclusions preemptively, especially if it makes you upset, aggressive, something like that. Um, and uh, even me talking like that, I start to get, I start to wig out when it feels like we're just giving advice. It's like I, I don't like being those people. So I just, I like to share more about just what we would do. But I, I do think that in this instance, you, you never know what the other person is going through or if they're just, they may just be oblivious to what they're doing and the impact that it has, has on you. I, hey, I made dinner, we, I mean, we made plans. I, I sacrificed doing other things to make sure that we had this time because that's what plans do. Plans mm -hmm. mean you're not planning to do everything else. And I would say that the vast majority of the time, assuming uh, that what is going on is this person is just a little bit flighty, uh, you communicating that this is a concern of yours and pointing it out will, I don't know, I'm not a specially scheduled, schedule oriented person, but I'm, I, I'm not very flighty either. Like I'm, if I say I'm gonna be somewhere, I'm gonna be there, uh, but, my assumption is that people who are kind of like scattered is that all it takes, what you're constantly doing when somebody's got that personality is you're kind of competing for their sort of unofficial floating priorities. Yeah. And so by simply expressing concern about something, you move yourself to the top of, and so the next time you say you've got plans, they will be like, okay, I know that I have a tendency to kind of flake out, so I don't wanna do that because Casanora said that this was an issue and so I'm going to honor that. I have a, I think that's probably what's gonna happen. Now if you don't, if you can't make that, if you can't communicate in that way, if you're a person who just avoids conflict at all costs, then I think that you gotta make plan Bs. I think you gotta have a backup plan that you're okay right. and not emotionally drained by having to go to plan B. So you'd be like, all right, I got plans with you know who, which means it might fall through, but if it doesn't happen, I'm gonna eat a whole deep dish pizza yeah. and watch 
Ghostbusters. You know, you okay, got, yeah. you, you, you gotta have something that you can look forward to so that you don't get pissed at them. Yeah. But you can kind of reward yourself and almost kind of hope they cancel. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I definitely agree that you gotta find a way to not harbor resentment towards this person um, because it's not gonna change overnight. You know, the type of person that does this is gonna keep struggling with it even even if you have an, a, a great conversation. It may take two or three times but it's gonna, it's gonna happen again so you have to find a way and maybe that's, you, you invite them to things where there's other people so the plans aren't contingent on that person flaking or not, not flaking, you know? Right. Yeah, So it's true. like the thing can continue and hey, you're invited if you wanna come but I've changed the way that's I invite you idea. to things. Yeah. Um, let's, move to a, let's move to another one. I, kn I know that there was the one that, it's like three different people. Yeah, so three different people basically asked a very similar question so I will quickly read all these. First one's from Postcard HS. How do you reconnect with someone that you used to be best friends with? I had a best friend but ever, ever since we went to different schools we stopped talking. Second question from Cameron. If you haven't talked to someone for a while and nothing really ended your friendship, like a fight or moving away, et cetera, are you still friends with that person? Should you reach out and have a conversation or should you just let it go? And Lainey, how do I reconnect with a friend that I haven't hung out with regularly since elementary school? I have close neighborhood friends that, has, that stopped hanging out with me when our mutual friend died. Should I move on or try to befriend them again? And if so, how? Hmm. It's interesting because you know, we've gone through life together so we've always had each other, but we, we've also made really good friends over the years that I do, I wonder if you would call it a pattern of like losing losing connection. You know, it's, everybody that we've connected with and you know, it's like you had the, we got the grade school through high school friends. We've had some tight friendships there. Then we had some really tight college friends and then we had, there's, there's like a few post-college people and like I'm thinking of specific people all along the way that when we, especially when we moved out here, uh, our friendship got more, more insulin. Well, we made friends out here, you know, but the, all those friends were physically left behind but then w we would, it, I think it's a continuing pattern of like not really maintaining those friendships. And we discussed on a previous podcast about our issues with texting and uh, and talking on the phone. Mm -hmm. And neither of us are good at either of those and we don't use texting or talking on the phone really as a way to connect with people. It's usually a way to coordinate some particular strategic action. And then you couple that with the fact that Everybody's busy, I understand, but we but our time is very much scheduled. Like we've got friends, there's a lot of people that we're friends with in Los Angeles and uh, you'll be on a text thread with them and it'll be like 2.30 p.m. on a Wednesday. And all of a sudden they start texting each other and they text each other and they're like putting memes in there and they're tell, somebody's telling a story and somebody's responding to it. Right. 2.30 p.m. on a Wednesday 95 times out of 100, we're doing something that we just can't, I can't just be like, I'm gonna get out of this meeting or this brainstorming session or whatever it is and enter into this text chat. So we don't. For all intents and purposes, for our working hours. We're unavailable. We, we don't have a, it's like we don't have a, a, a phone for personal use. And then when we get home, it's like, okay, I haven't seen my kids or my wife all day. I'm gonna spend some quality time with them Maybe I'll be able to stay up long enough to watch a television show with my wife if I can do it, but I'm going to bed pretty early so I can get up and go to the gym. It's like we don't leave a lot of space in, for connecting with people who are not close to us physically. It's gotta be like, okay, all right, we're going out with this couple on a double date on Friday night or we're having this event six, at six, my house. Six weeks from now. And you it's, know, it's like a lot of it has to be booked because then you've got you got a couple of nights on the weekend. You got, you got the the stuff that your kids have planned that you got to attend. Then you got like, okay, you got relatives coming into town, like your, your like your nieces. So, and, and so, so then that I, weekend we have off. a difficult time just keeping up with the people in Los Angeles. And then you've got people who live in different parts of Los Angeles, and if they're on the west side, they might as well be in South Carolina. 
you know, and so then everybody back home in North Carolina, people that you've been friends with for a long time, unless you're someone who can text and talk on the phone for an extended period of time, those friendships become, like we've got a number of friendships where I consider myself very close to someone that is in North Carolina and if we decide to to get together while I'm in North Carolina or they come out here, we have a great time and then we pick up exactly where we left off and I think we've all kind of accepted this isn't the kind of friendship that we're gonna be like relying on each other on a regular basis. This is, a, this is something we re-enter into. Right, like two examples. So Mike from, from back in North Carolina, work will bring him out here to California and sometimes it may not be too close, maybe like Bakersfield, but then he'll make a point and like with a lot of advance notice to like initiate with us and say, hey, I'm coming into town, can we get together one night or let's go camping for a few nights. You know, we used to do that, like once a year we would go camping, it was something that like, he would always initiate it, you know, because he was the one coming into town, he would give us heads up and we would, so we always make mm -hmm. some time Lately, over the past couple of years, we haven't been able to make the time for the, the camping like we used to do. Um, but, it's, but it's on his initiative. Whenever, whenever I go back to North Carolina, the timing is so limited, I'm just prioritizing my family and if I get to see one friend when I'm there, I'm very lucky because it's like right. the once a year trip. And then you've got the, the other, another example like Eric who, who lives in uh, Utah. And so when we go to, he lives in Park City, so when we would go to Sundance, well, I mean, if he found out we were going there and we didn't see him, that would be that would be an insult. I mean, it's yeah. like, because, I mean, he's a high school friend, he was in the wax paper dogs with us. Uh, we, don't, we don't really communicate at all, except when we happen to see him there, or like when we went, we went to something else. Oh, and we had a show. We introduced in, him in, to the audience in Utah, in Salt Lake. Yeah, in, in Salt Lake. Um, Salt Lake City, and so, but when we see him or when we see Mike, it's like the friendship picks up right where it left off, and I think those are two examples of like an understanding. I think that in a lot of ways, those individuals like Mike or Eric have, I feel like they've kind of adjusted to us in some way, but yeah. that, that's my assumption. I know Mike, because I've been friends with him for a long time, is the kind of guy who will get on the phone and talk for a long time. Like he, his job requires him to drive a lot of places and he'll talk to people on the phone. And he can, he can Does just. He, but he doesn't talk to you, right? You don't talk to him on the no, phone, do you? No, very rarely. It's like we'll text and we'll get something set up and then of course then we have like long conversations, the three of us, once we're doing something like camping together or whatever. Right, but and like we got the friend who, he went back to Australia for a, a, like, Weeks, yeah, and it was like we're we're really tight, but it's like I find the the conversations that we have over text, it's more like when are you coming back? Mm -hmm. It's not like let's continue our friendship while you're gone because this because I'm just so bad at continuing a uh, a friendship over text, mm -hmm. you know. So I find that it's like it's all just very practical, and I think we, we've talked about that before, and like learning how there is an opportunity for text to be a legitimate way to continue a friendship. But um, I, I have this I have this sense of guilt and obligation whenever like I fall out of connection with somebody. And it, I think I just put that on myself. And over the years, I feel like when the two of us talk about it, we, we've said things that have made me feel better that I don't know if they're true or healthy, but we say things like, well, you know what, I'm not good at text, I'm not good at long-term friendships, but if when I see him, it'd, it'd be fine. You know, but like, like a great example is Greg. We were super tight with Greg in college and like, you know, he's he's working, he's working up in Washington State and doing his own thing and like I, w we saw him when we went on tour up there, like they came in, but it's not like, occasionally he'll text me and then we'll have an exchange that'll, f it'll, fizzle out over the course of 10 minutes. And then in the past there would be like, let's have, we would hop on the phone a couple of times. We'd have like an hour long catch up session. But like, I mean, I love my mama, but I have a really hard time calling her on the phone and reconnecting. Mm -hmm. 
And, but I but I have this sense of guilt that's like I don't talk to my mom enough or like I don't, like I wish that I had a more of an active friendship with Greg because he's so busy with his work, much like us, it's like he doesn't have the opportunity to come down here and visit and we don't have the opportunity to go up there and visit and you know, so it's, that's a, that's been difficult because I, you know, I actually, I've moved from feeling, I don't know, I moved from feeling like this is just the way it is. Uh, I still love the guy and I know he loves me but the circumstances make it where it, our friendship can't be active to feeling bad about it and then kind of back and forth, I don't know. Yeah, I just, um, I don't like, I don't want to put that on myself. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't, I know I can make all kinds of excuses but I just don't want to, I don't think it's healthy for me personally to feel, to, to sit around and feel guilty about about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, it's it's one thing if the person is going through something specifically challenging and they need me. Yeah. Uh, if they don't, and I'm, none of the people that I'm thinking about right now don't have some some people in their lives that can meet some of those needs. You know, I'm not in a I'm not in a place to be like, what what can I do for you tangibly? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I have just kind of become okay with the nature of these friendships is that they pick up where they left off when they do and that's a great thing and there's no hard feelings. And I just feel like trying to make anything more of it, um, I don't know, it just, I, I just feel like I'm setting myself up for disappointment, both disappointment in myself and disappoint, them being disappointed in me if I like start trying to say, hey, actually the, the dynamic of this thing is gonna change. Like we're going to have this dynamic long distance friendship via text or via a phone call every now and again. I just know that it's not gonna be a reliable thing and I just don't wanna it's begin, not realistic begin it. for you. And yeah, I, I think it'll become more clear that I do have some neurosis associated with this, but you know, there's a, I, I I would like to believe, to build on your point, that if if we heard that Greg or someone in his family was going through something, that if they, if we knew we could be of help by being there, that we would we would do everything we can to drop what we're doing to go up there, you know, if it if it if there was something bad that happened, if they were going through something. Um, but in the absence of that, um, you know, and. It, an occasional text is like, "Hey, you crossed my mind." You know, is is I still aspire to to like to at least dabble in that. Yeah, and it's interesting because you know um, we were closest with Greg, and then in college, and then Tim moved in, and then like Tim was really close with Matt, and we got close with Matt, and then you know we got a text from Matt yesterday, and all he was doing was asking if we had listened to an album, you know. Did you get that text because? I did and I listened to the album but you responded on the text thread and then I never got around to responding on the text thread. Which is an interesting thing that happens sometimes where if somebody is sending something to the both of us, whether it's an email or a text, I've got this thing in my mind that if one of us responds, the other one isn't obligated to and I know that that's not what this, this wasn't a business thing, this was like hey, have you listened to this album? <laughs> yeah. And so I was actually thinking about that when you a second ago. I was like, yeah, I haven't gotten back on that text thread to be like, I also don't like the al- album that you recommended. <laughs> 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 but I only listened to it one time. And so then he was like, oh, you gotta listen to it two or three times. So then I was like, okay, I'm gonna listen to this album again and then I'm gonna get in on the text thread. But I could also just say that um, on the text thread. But I think it was cool that, you know, that, he, and he, like, it either, Every single time, or the vast majority of time, he initiates the the conversation because we just like I don't know if we've ever initiated a text with Matt, but like every month or so, there's like a little exchange, and it's it's a it's fa- it's actually valuable um, 
for me to like just say, for what it is, and for me not to attach some sort of guilt. That it's I'm also not doing valuable more. because he's introduced us. Matt is the one who introduced uh, us to Sturgill, and then Jason Isbell. I don't think Sturgill because I think we went in Amoeba Records and I literally saw the record and I was like, "Who is this?" Okay, well, I know for a fact he introduced me to Jason Isbell. Yeah, and that I am as thankful for that as any music recommendation that I've ever gotten. Oh wow! And then you've got Tim, who I think because of the result of some of the stories we told on this podcast, that he started to reach out to discuss those with us and correct our, correct our errors. Correct our errors, but it led to like. Fact check. Us, us having more of a conversation and connecting more and I really enjoyed that. And it was like, it was a little odd that's like, okay, he's listening to Ear Biscuits and then he's, and I'll tell you why it was odd. I'll try to articulate that. And then, cause he's probably listening. <laughs> <laughs> but it felt odd to me cause it was just like, okay, you, you know, he's sitting on a conversation we're having but we're not having it with him. So it's like, I don't know. I, I have all this guilt associated with friends because I'm like, I feel bad you're listening to our podcast, but you can't be here at the table to be a part of the conversation. Like if we were, if we had an active friendship like we used to have, like you'd have a seat at the table. And I know that's not, that's not healthy and, and I don't know he's not thinking that, but I start to think like if Greg or Tim or Matt listen to our podcast, do they start to feel like we're not good friends or something to them because we never initiate conversations with them. I don't know why I attach so much uh, guilt to these things, but I do. Uh, actually, I guess I'll share this story. Um, the, where it really came to a head, a, a friend out here in LA, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to be very careful in telling this story because it's, this story's about me. It's not about him at all. Uh, but it's about a text exchange that I had um, because I was, we, he's, a, he's a friend that, like we were close a couple of years ago, like right when we moved to LA, but then it was like, because, purely because of circumstantial reasons, we fell out of, of being in contact. Mm -hmm. Like it went from seeing each other every week or every few weeks, it, even if you didn't plan it, we would see each other and having little conversations that then kind of trickles into, hey, let's make plans or we're going here for lunch, you wanna come type of thing to like none of that. We're just in different circles. Kind of like what some people ask, how do you reconnect? And um, so then it would be like once, maybe twice a year, we'd see each other or he would come over and we would have this reconnection session that would be like an hour, or maybe two hours. And it would be great to reconnect, but then it would, it would be like radio silence from both parties for a long time. And I guess one day, I w it caught me at a bad time that he decided to text me out of the blue and it was, just a, it was just a friendly text. It was something like, miss you man, or, or thinking about you. And I had I, been struggling with in general and you know where the story is going, but I was, I was struggling with if I feel something or if I think something, I should say it. So, and just in general, like I'm trying to become a person who's more honest about what I'm, what I'm thinking or feeling or going through or respond, how I feel like I should respond to somebody. And I thought it would be a healthy practice for me to respond to his text with exactly what I thought, what I thought in the moment. And But what I was thinking was, I, I don't, well, you know what? I'll, I'll read what I wrote back. Okay, I remember this. He's like, dude, I miss you. That was his text. And again, this is about me, not him. That was all his text said. And I was like, I'm just gonna, I got a lot of feelings are coming up in me and I, I just, and this is what I wrote. Hey man, thanks for the message. Honestly, 
it's very tough for me to know how to respond. So I'll just be real about it. I care about you, but I just don't have time in my life where I'm at right now, right now with family and work to devote enough time to take the friendship we had before and make it work now. There are a few friends in my life now that I'm actively trying to maintain a quality friendship with and it is proving to be very difficult, purely from a practical standpoint. I wish it weren't the case, but I respect you and wanted to be honest about it. So I'm writing this from a place of love. Thanks for hearing me out, man. <laughs> and you're laughing because why on earth would anybody who has an ounce of kindness in their heart write this in response to a friend who simply wrote, dude, I miss you. Right, is that what you're laughing at? Well, no, I'm laughing because this is such a, it's just such a link thing. <laughs> so I, it just, it's comical to me. Now, it was I, an experiment in honesty because well, I, I feel guilty about everything that I felt well, let is me, true. And let me, I'm gonna, as your best friend, I wanna comment on that because I find that very interesting that that, first of all, I think your instincts are great, right? I think that the guilt that you feel about friendships and your sense of obligation and your and your obligation to be honest with people, I mean, these are all really good things. This is not, this, is, this shows that you're a person of character. Um, I think that it's interesting that you made a conscious decision to be like, I feel like I need to say what I think more because mm -hmm. on the spectrum of people who say what they think, you're pretty high on the spectrum of the, the frequency with which you say what you think. Candor. Is pretty high, potentially the highest of anyone that I know personally. Okay, okay. If you can name a person who says what they think about things more often than you, that we know collectively, I would be interested to know who that person is. I can think of one person that, that we knew and uh, I didn't much like this person for that reason. <laughs> so. That person would always say exactly what they thought. And so it's, it's and, and with, of course. With no concern for how it would be received. And so, yeah, and, and where my tendency, I, not that I don't talk a lot, not that I don't have a lot of opinions, but in certain situations like this, it's just like, I'm always gonna be on team, just say something to be nice, to just keep things where they're at. Don't push away and don't pull that per, like my tendency is to say something that just kinda keeps things at a stasis. That's just my instinct. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but in every type of interaction, I'm just, no, I don't wanna move things further in either direction and that's just my sort of knee jerk response to any kind of interaction like that. Well, and I just, it, it just drove me crazy to feel like I, I I respected this person, this friend of mine, that I couldn't I couldn't give them what I felt like a true friend would give. And it and so just I felt like I needed to define the relationship, so to speak. Um Well and I will, out of respect But I will say in addition to this, to add more color to this situation without getting into specifics, that this person was going through something difficult and had reached out to both of us uh, and spent some time kind of catching us up on what they were going through. And it was obvious, it, 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 it was obvious that they wanted and needed friends to kind of help them get through this situation. And so there was a, you know, we had similar interactions, you with him and then me with him separately. I don't think we got together, the three of us. No. And I felt like, yeah, it was weird for me because I was like, I don't think I can give this person what they need right now for a number of really complex reasons, but I just, and so, and maybe you communicate, he didn't send me a text that said I miss you because I assume that when you're interacting, you felt more of an obligation to be like, okay, I can see what this guy needs and I'm going to try to give it to him, which that's not, that's not good on me, that's good on you, I mean, I, I'm I'm probably giving out the vibe that's just like, okay, 
I can see that red is not available to me in this way. Mm -hmm. And so he's not, but he may have thought that you were available to him in that way. So you probably sensed a little bit of pressure when he sends that text. It's like, hey, I, I still need you to help yeah, me through this. But the, and his response was very gracious, um, very kind, but it was also clarifying that, I mean, he was basically saying, I, I was just, I was just being friendly. This wasn't coming from a place of me needing something from you. Um, I just, you know, I just wanted. I, it was more of just like a friendly. We're friends. Just checking in. Yeah, it was just like, and it wasn't. It wasn't anything more than that. And there was a little bit of an exchange there where we clarified what what each other meant. And then, a day later, I base I wrote back one last thing, and I. I said, I read back through my text and just wanted to apologize for giving what must have felt like a cold hearted, out of the blue response to a friendly kind text. I was trying to respect you by being honest about what I was able to give, even though you were not asking for anything. And I'm sorry if it insulted or otherwise hurt you. You deserve better. And I think that's what I was actually trying to say. And he responded, I appreciate that and that I mean, because of my experiment in honesty, I'll call it, air quotes, that was apparently the end of our friendship. It was definitely the end of that exchange. And it, I mean, I guess that was that was my message. It was like, I love you and respect you, but I don't have time to invest in a friendship in the way that I think you deserve, therefore, I just needed to get this off my chest and break up with you? I. Like I, I, I regret it. I think about when am I gonna cross paths with this guy in, you know, in a Ralph's grocery store or on the street or something, and I, like I often think about what I'm going to say, and now I'm tortured by that. <laughs> you know, it's like well, so let's let's get back to her question though, right? Yeah, it, because I so think I, I think maybe we have different perspectives on this, and that's fine. Where you know, and I'm not. I'm not just saying this is my advice because this is what I do because I don't, I, it isn't that I don't feel guilty uh, about it at all at, when we talk about it in this way, but I think I've made a decision and maybe this is a decision out of self-preservation. Uh, but I mean, one of the things that I have learned in therapy is that it's okay to make decisions that have your own health your own mental well being in mind. And I think that, um, you know, we come from a place uh, where I think that there is a sense that, you know, self sacrifice is super important and kind of always putting other people's needs before yours is super important. And I, and I, I in principle, agree with those things in, in, in principle, right? Um, but there's sometimes just because, like sometimes your needs are actually, you, you, you gotta think about what your needs are and you have to think about the reality of a situation. And so I think the way that I interact with these long-term friendships is just like, okay, when I have the opportunity, like a real opportunity, whether that's a text exchange, even if it's just initiated by the other person, or it's seeing them in person, I wanna be present and I wanna be available and I want to be um, invested in the friendship for that time. But then when we're not physically together and we kinda go back to our own lives because we're not in this, a situation that where we're gonna be brought into each other's presence on a regular basis, I'm going to be okay with the fact that there's not much of a friendship in the gaps. And I'm, and I'm gonna be okay with that because I feel like trying to make anything beyond that happen is gonna be something that I'm not going to be good at it and it's not gonna be a regular thing and it's only going to lead to disappointment. If we can have an understanding that there's not gonna be much here until we see each other again. And hey, let's let's be open to that. Let's try to make that happen. If we're gonna be in the area, I'm gonna let you know so we can get together. Like, let's be proactive about planning. Hey, let's go to see a game back in Raleigh together or something like that. Or hey, we're coming to your town, come out to our show and let's hang out. Um, 
I, 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 my advice to these three people who are asking about different situations is like, and I don't, and it's, it, I don't know if some some of these situations may not be like a long distance situation. It may just be like I was friends with this person and now I'm not. My tendency is just to be like, friendships are very difficult, but I don't. I don't know if it depends on the situation, but I don't know if it's worth it to be like, all right, I'm going to place the burden on myself that if I don't, if, if this friendship is not rekindled, there's something wrong with me. Or there, you, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't think, yeah, I, you, I don't think you have to force it. Yeah, I do think, I, I, I appreciate what you're saying, it's helpful. Uh, because I think friendships are, there, it, it, it's a, it's a reciprocating cyclical process. You know, it's a, it's a relationship, and there's give and there's take, and take and give, and it, it takes both parties being on enough of the same page to continue to move a friendship forward. So if you're wanting to. If you're the one wanting to rekindle a friendship, you got to respect the fact that some that person on the other end of that might not be in a position to make that happen or exactly the way that you would want it to or envision it it coming together. Uh if at all. Um uh, I found in, in the in the clarifying exchange that I have with with my friend and I do I I do still call him a friend. Uh um he clarified that he he knew, but based on the fact that he, like whenever the conversation happened, it would be hit on his initiative. So he said, I actually understand that. Uh, you know, so me reaching out was just a, a kindness. You know, it wasn't, there were, no, there were no strings attached. I think that's why I feel bad, is that like I, I made assumptions where there, I made wrong assumptions about why he was saying, and that like there were strings attached that they weren't, which then it was, it was presumptuous, um, where he was just being nice, you know. Yeah. But I think, I mean, r relationships are dicey, and you and so you've got to you, you and you can't like you said you can't force you can't force something to work if it's not going to work. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try, but you should you should. I think your advice is. And initiate lightly, and just see what comes of it. I mean, it's just like in a romantic relationship. If you're really into somebody, you can't, you can't, you can lead a horse to water, so to speak. Yeah. But you can't make somebody fall in love with you. But don't date especially, a horse, especially don't, if they're a horse. Don't date a horse. Um, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's much more. It, it's, for, I we don't. I think we fall back on thinking of friendships as being this thing that's like, oh, it's so easy and it just happens. And it's like, I'm, aren't I likable? Aren't you likable? Well, then what, can't we be friends? It's like, no, there's a lot of freaking factors. It's very, I mean, it's in many ways, it's just as challenging as a romantic relationship. I well, mean, and we, you know, I think that we may be thinking about this in a very narrow way because of our age. Mm -hmm. uh, because we just assume. Again, we've already established that we're not great at connecting with people digitally mm -hmm. yeah. via phone or text or heck, I've I've got a VR headset now. I could sit down in a room with someone who's got one, and maybe physical proximity will continue to become less and less a factor in maintaining a friendship, and maybe that has already happened, and. Because I think what I just said a second ago is that hey, listen, if you're going, if if we're together physically, I want to make an effort to be there for you and to be a listening ear and to catch up and to be present. But if we're not physically present together, the best I'm going to do is just try to be proactive about opportunities for us to be physically present together that are practical. And maybe that's a really narrow way to look at it. I understand that about myself. And you might be like, hey guys, listen, my best friends are people that are in different countries that I connect with, that I video chat with. What What is this? Right. Most of the people that we're talking about are kinda like us of our generation and we're not video chatting with a lot of people in the way that like our kids will just you know, you were talking about Lincoln just being on like a constant video chat with a group of friends. It, yeah. 
um, on that like house party app or whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah, I understand, okay, this generation, this next generation is different, so maybe our advice is not very applicable to them. Uh, so I don't know where you're at with these situations. I would just say that if you feel like you you need that person, like you need that friendship or they might need that friendship, um, then I think, like you said, sort of initiating, but it, not initiating, don't, I just, the idea of putting a burden on yourself and feeling this, all of a sudden there's a negative oblig, obligation or guilt that's associated with your interaction with that person. To me, I just don't like that negativity. When I want to think, when I think about somebody we went to college with, I've got good memories, and I think about the next time we're hanging out, we're going to have a good time. But I don't want to think about, and then every other time I think about them, all I do is just associate guilt with the fact that I don't talk to them enough. Yeah, that, this doesn't not, seem healthy. That's, it's not. So how can I focus on what the positive is? And it, but you like you said, if they're going through something, they need somebody to talk to, they need somebody to show up for them, whether that's physically or digitally, then I, I hope that I can do that. And I feel an obligation to do that. But that doesn't mean in every sense it's appropriate or the right choice for you to even do that. Right. I, I think we do need to say that. It's like just because somebody needs a friend, there there has to be scenarios where that doesn't automatically mean you have to be that friend. Right. So I'm just trying to tip the scales and I'm saying that more for myself. And again, that that wasn't actually the case. I think I I might have brought some of that assumption, but that wasn't the case with the with the scenario that I explored. Um, so, but I, d- I actually don't know where you is it. Where do you come down on this text exchange? That, I mean, if you're saying you would have just been nice and like you would have continued the niceties, and then I, I mean, and then the opposite—that's one extreme, right? Is it not? Because and the other extreme is clearly what I did, which is basically break off the friendship because I couldn't be, you know, the everything I thought I had to be, which wasn't even the case. I don't know. I mean, I definitely am. Like I said, I'm. My tendency is to maintain the status quo, and I don't. I really don't like uncomfortable situations. I don't like awkwardness. I don't like conflict. And so it's really difficult for me when I'm like, okay, I need to be honest with this person so that we can clarify where we're at so we can actually reach some sort of conclusion. Like I'm much more likely to be like, okay, this is going to be this sort of thing that just indefinitely continues and isn't really that big of an inconvenience. It's easy to just send back a text that says, miss you too, man. But when it's like, hey, let's get together and do this and it's like, I've got, I've got these people that I that I feel like I need to prioritize because they're like in more in my inner circle, and I can't say yes to to them right now and give them what they what I want to give them. Forget what they need. What I want to give them as a friend. Then then at that point you got to you're just lying and saying actually I can't get together. I have plans. You know, it's like you're just letting people read between the lines. It's like okay, you can see that you're initiating. You know, I'm not a I'm not a bad person for just a you know, I think most people can get the message. It's like, hey, I, it's yeah. not it's not that I don't like you. It's just that I don't have capacity. Yeah, I think my theory is that you arrive at the same result yeah. with a little less awkwardness. Yeah, and it might take a little bit longer to get there for somebody to get the message that like, oh, he's not really available. I'm not. I don't necessarily think that one is better or worse. I. You are ripping the Band-Aid off, I'm letting the Band-Aid fall off in the shower. You know what I'm saying? And um, maybe it should have come I off a little. I wouldn't shower with someone who's not that close of a friend, but go ahead. May, may, maybe I, the Band-Aid should have come off a little bit earlier. Um, but I tend to, it really takes a lot for me to have an uncomfortable conversation with somebody. So, well, I I I I'll, I tend to I need to take this to therapy, clearly. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I mean, I think there's probably some deep-rooted abandon fear of abandonment thing that then I don't want to put on other people even then when not when they're not even expecting or fearing that themselves. I would say that that would be something I, to I explore. I think it's probably something in that arena. So, um 
I mean, we can leave it at that. I'm, no, I'm, okay. I'm, I, it seems to me I'm pressing you to solve my, my problem. I don't have a solution. I'm just telling you the way that I would do it and it, ten, it tends to be okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I've definitely slowed my roll on, on saying what I'm thinking, which brings it back to the still maybe obnoxious at times level that you're used to. Um, I don't know how much help we've been. We didn't answer a lot of questions. We did answer three questions at once. You know what? It was helpful. took a lot. I mean, it was, it was more, he- Hey, it was helpful for me. Thank we, you. We did what we often do, which is we take your questions and then we make it. Uh, a, so a, a, so you now you're apologizing a, for that? An internal exploration of our own lives. But hopefully that we're, you know what? We're all learning together as a large community. And uh, hopefully we're, we're getting better at doing things. Friendships as we go. Um, I, I quite enjoyed the conversation, and uh, I'm kind of nervous about it going out there. But why? Wh- you got nothing to be. You got nothing to apologize about. And if you do, you will. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do have a wreck in effect. And, okay. Uh, mine is a book that I am listening to that uh, everybody's talking about. This book. Oh, you got to You you got to read it or listen to it. I'm halfway through it. It's captivating, it's enthralling, it's Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrow. Uh, so of course, Ronan Farrow, he is most known as being uh, Woody Allen and Mia Farrow's son, uh, even though he, uh, for understandable reasons, likes to distance himself from his famous parents and he has a career of his own uh, as a journalist. And he was- A lot the, of help you just gave him. He was the one who uh, was very instrumental in sort of breaking the Harvey Weinstein story. Ah. And it's just this incredibly engrossing tale of him trying to get to the bottom of the story and just be able to report it. And all the crazy stuff that he encountered in the process of going after someone as big and as powerful and as with many as many connections as Harvey Weinstein. Uh, just fascinating, fascinating story. And so it's a docu, it's a docu novel. Yeah, and his uh, the audio book, which he was actually some people made fun of him for this, but I thought it was great. Oh, okay. He, he does he does all the voices for his audio book, and he like does like impersonations of the people that he spoke with, whether they be Australian, British, or you know a woman with a sultry voice, and he basically just does all the accents, and he's he does a really good job at it. But I it's think. not, but it's nonfiction. It's not fiction. This is all any plays rec- like there's a recording, there's the famous recording of Harvey Weinstein that uh one of the actresses that he was harassing um took wow and it's in there. Uh anyway, fascinating story if you're into that kind of thing. Uh Catch and Kill. I'm recommending the audiobook cuz that's what I've listened to, uh but I'm sure it's a great book to read as well. Okay, thanks for hanging out with us. Hashtag I, 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 every time I say hashtag, now I want to say hashtag Bleak Creek because well, we've you been know what? promoting the novel Keep so much. Keep talking about Bleak hashtag Creek. Hashtag Ear Biscuits. You can use both of them. If um, you, you want to talk about hashtag Bleak Creek on hashtag Ear Biscuits, we don't care how many hashtag hashtags you use. But you know what? You can hashtag count on us hashtag being back again next week, just like we are most every week. And, can, and you know what? Being your friend. Yeah, you know what? We'll be your friend, hashtag friends. We're your friends. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.